we did a menu that I thought was approachable, but still very much Charlie Trotter. And it was a lot of pressure. We, we actually, it was the first time that we've done an event that we involved chefs from all over the company. You know, the chef at Laurel did a, did a course, the chef from Ariette did a course, the chef from Nave did a course, and our corporate chef did a course. And, you know, I only did that because I thought, in my mind, I wanted them to focus 100% on that dish that they were doing, not four dishes at the same time. Because, you know, it is a lot of pressure to say that you're doing Charlie Trotter-esque food. You can never replicate the food that Charlie Trotter did. But to even have like that kind of feel and that kind of approach, and um, it was a lot of pressure. For me personally, and I think that once I talked to my chefs and, and I talked to them a little bit about it, they also felt the pressure too. So, you know, uh, we actually partnered with Sip Smith Gin uh, on, this, um, on this event. I thought it was an incredible collaboration. They did a great job uh, of performing as partners in this in this event, and you know they paired cocktails with every single um, course that we did, and the cocktails were put together by Andrew McCutcheon, which is general manager of Ariette. So we started with a welcome cocktail of a slow gin fizz, a sip smith gin with lime and San Pellegrino, super simple, something to open up your palate and get you ready to go. Uh, the fennel salad was really kind of like an homage to what's in season in South Florida. So we did fennel from Bee Heaven Farms, mustard vinaigrette, Marcona almonds, Asian pear. The Asian pear was also put into like a broken vinaigrette with sherry vinegar that was uh, kind of like ornately put around the greens and the fennel that was on the plate. Uh, again, all local. And it's something that, you know, when I started reading Charlie's work very early in my life, it was something that he talked about a lot, which is you know, the best product at the best time every year. Uh, that course was paired with Army and Navy, which was, again, gin, lemon, orgeat, and bitters. Uh, the second course, which was actually my favorite course, which was um, a salmon terrine. It was smoked salmon that was layered with, uh, it's almost like a bay leaf. It, it was a bay leaf garlic butter in between each layer. The bay leaf garlic butter is actually part of our bread service at Laurel. And it was served with a carrot carambola gastrique with red peppers. The carrot and cam carambola both came from Bee Heaven, and we juiced them, reduced them down, added a little bit of vinegar at the end, and then the red peppers we just steamed lightly and then added it. So it was almost like, uh, again, a broken vinaigrette with juice and so on and so forth. That was paired with a Gibson. Um, a Gibson is a very simple cocktail, gin, dry vermouth, pickled onion. Uh, it is actually the cocktail that the Gibson room is named after, also the guitar. And then uh, for the third course, we did um, braised bison short rib with a root vegetable pave and a parsnip puree. Um, this dish was inspired off of a, uh, a chapter that he had in one of his books that was just based off of root vegetables. The root vegetable was like the main ingredient, and then whatever protein was aligned with that was actually secondary. So. Uh, the root be vegetable pave was rutabagas from uh, Bee Heaven Farms. Also, the parsnips were were not, but you know, the the root vegetable pave was basically the star of that. The the bison was a good assistant to really like showcase what a root vegetable pave should be like. Uh, that was paired with a Martinez, which is again Sip Smith gin, uh, sweet vermouth, uh, maraschino, and orange. And then for the uh, final course, we did. Uh, the Gibson flan, which is a foie gras flan with rum, rum drunken figs. And that was served with a gin Alexander. Again, gin, cacao, and cream. Super delicious meal. Um, you know, as we were going through the meal and watching the film at the same time, it was something that I took incredibly personal. And I think a lot of people, as the film started to go and, and the meal started to go, you saw people's, I think, demeanor change because like the the actual film, the documentary goes from very light, Charlie Trotter is on top of the world to more of a, you know, a darker time in his life and all the way to the end of Trotter's, that Trotter's was around for 25 years. And, you know, it's funny that we did this on January 15th because it was Ariad's seven year birthday. And, you know, a lot of talk was about the fact that Char uh, Trotter's made it to 25 years, which for a restaurant of that caliber, 25 years is a fucking lifetime. You know, it was a beautiful event. Um, 
I, I hope that we did justice to his food. Uh, it seemed like Chef Norman was very happy and, and very proud of the stuff that we did. So I thought it was, it was great.